So subquery factoring, what this is about is rewriting your SQL to pull parts of the SQL out into a separate subquery. The typical example of this, the worst case, is undoubtedly the correlated subquery. Correlated subqueries are often seriously bad news. Now, we should all know already what a correlated subquery is. It's a query where you join two tables in such a way that for every row of the outer table, you have to query the inner table. So, for example, oops, taking a classic case again, I'll continue working in the EMP schema. Now, if we were to run a query, say, that attempts to work out every department where the total of the salaries is, say, more than a certain amount. What would I do? Well, I would run select department name, D name, from DEPT, where, so you have a cutoff of 10,000, where 10,000, oops, that's not typing in the wrong window, select D name from DEPT, D, where 10,000 is greater than my correlated subquery, which would be select the sum of salaries from emp E, where, and let me do the drawing, where E dot depth no equals D dot depth no. So pretty straightforward what's going on. For every row in the department's table, I'm going to have to sum up the appropriate number of salaries and do the test. It does the total come to more than 10,000. And we find that I get two rows back, sales and accounting. So two rows where it's greater than, <coughs> sorry, that's less actually, I'm doing 10,000 greater than. I've retrieved the two departments where the total of the salaries is less than 10,000 pounds, or even dollars. And we see how the statement is run. Now to get the full detail of that, I'll set the auto trace off. Auto trace off, and get the full information about how that thing was run. To take things a step further, I'll run it through the rule-based optimizer. So auto session set optimizer mode equals rule, and see how Oracle is going to run that statement. The next testing we need to do is get some statistics. So set statistics level equals all statistics. Alter session, oh gosh, alter session, set statistics level equals all. And then run my statement with the correlated subquery and see how it actually ran that query. So to get the execution plan out with execution statistics, we select star from table, and the table will be our friend DBMS X plan. And display the cursor. just with the usual values we'll do to get the last rung of the statement. Um, what have I done? Select D name from DEP. That was where I it. Got it. Right. <coughs> now, here we see the bad news about how that statement was run. What happened, it did a full table scan of AMP, of depth rather, full table scan of depth, and it retrieved four rows. Now, then we see we did a full table scan of AMP was the next stage, and we did it four times. So for every row in the outer table, in the outer query, we did a full table scan of the inner, of the inner table. And that's pretty disastrous if you were joining to a table I mean, the outer table has millions of rows. It's an absolute bloody disaster. But that's what the rule-based optimizer has done. It's done exactly what I told it to do. It's run that inner query, that second query, for every, once for every row of the outer query. Let us now see how the cost-based optimizer does. We would hope that does a rather better job. Now, the cost-based optimizer has got exactly the same result set, and it's done it much more efficiently. You can see what it's done. It's, in effect, reversed the logic it's gone to the EMP table first, and has scanned it once, sorted it, done the aggregation, and it's even done the check. You see the filter coming at line four, it's worked out as the sum total of the salaries over 10,000. Then it's on a joint adept. But this still 
isn't perfect. It's not bad. It's had to do the index unique scan of depth twice and then do the lookup on the depth table twice. Why? Because there were two rows returned, sales and accounting. But that's an awful lot better. So the cost-based optimizer has rewritten the query. Now, take another example though, another equivalent SQL, because that's just running that statement, that same statement through different versions of the optimizer. Now let's say your programmer tries to be clever, and your programmer has been told that correlated subqueries are bad news, and indeed correlated subqueries usually are bad news. And perhaps he decides to write it like this. So we select, <coughs> say, dname from depth, and select dname from depth, and then we can go to natural join, natural join emp, so join depth to emp, and give it a group by. So group by depth no, or in fact groups by depth no, or group by dname would be better, group by dname having some cell less than 10 or less than 10,000. So you can see what I'm doing. This is, a, or I hope this will be an equivalent SQL, and it is. We get exactly the same result set back. A different order, but never mind that. I didn't specify an order by clause. So my program has been clever. He's been told that, sub that correlated subqueries are bad news, so he's rewritten the query due to join and a group by with having. Well, what's actually happened within the execution plan? Right. Not so good, is it? What it's had to do is go back to PK depth, go to that, go to the departments table, do a merge join. What's it joining to? It has had to do four sorts of the EMP table. Only one scan, so it's not, it's not too bad. But we've had to sort those 14 rows four times. Quite simply, Oracle could not identify the fact that that statement is an equivalent SQL. It didn't realize that that is an equivalent SQL to that. It did a fairly good job, but it's by no means perfect. So what I will now do is show what your programmer should have done. What your programmer should have done is told the optimizer what he wanted it to do. And that is by manually factoring out the subquery. So with, say, salary total, sal tot, as. Well, what do we want to do? Well, we want to pass to EMP, totaling up the salaries per department. So select steps now sum sal as sum sal from emp and do the group by group by depth no so I'm manually factoring out the subquery that was causing the problems and now we can do a join we can select D name from depth natural join what did I call it? Sal tot. Sal tot, where sum sal less than 10,000. And we get the same rows back. So that's a third equivalent SQL. It's a third equivalent. So I've now got three versions of the same statement, totally different syntax that give identical results. And what is this one like when we look at the execution plan? It's perfect. We're back to the one that the optimizer generated in the first place. We've done, we're processing the EMP table just once to construct the view that I've factored out there. And then we have to probe the index on depths. We'll have to do that twice because we've got two rows back. So manually, I told the optimizer to do what it was doing previously without any danger of your programmers. And that's what your programmers should be doing. Rather than forcing the optimizers to do the rewrite, they should be rewriting it themselves. So, three sequels. Can I, uh, yes. I'm sorry, can I interject a, little, a couple things? Uh, really good stuff. Just to interject, um, so, so the recap here on what you've just seen is, is three equivalent sequels. You, you saw the correlated subquery. Then you saw natural join. And then finally, the subquery factoring with the with clause. And as, as John has demonstrated to us, 
the, the width clause is, is the most solid coding of it because you're telling the optimizer what you want to do. Um, John, a quick, uh, we got a bunch of things in from the students here. Uh, one thing, your audio is a little funky, so if you can uh, speak a little, little up and a little slower, that would be great. If you can, increase your font size, that would also be great. Uh, not an emergency on that, though. And a couple of questions. Um, in one of our explain plans, we, uh, we had, or in the last two explain plans, we had what seemed to be two nested loops. Um, and we were calling it a nested loop join. And, and folks, that's the new version of, of Oracle 11G's uh, single nested loop. Uh, we cover it in much more detail in the SQL tuning class. We'll compare the 9i version versus the 10g version, version, or version versus the 11g version. But that is actually a single nested loop between two tables, emp and dep. It's just how Oracle is um, externalizing it. And it really is creating a subset, so it loops uh, twice, but it's, it's more efficient than the old way. Uh, the other question in the queue was related to uh, statistics level. You were setting, um, you had altered session and set statistics level equal to all. Um, so that's an initialization parameter, statistics level. And by de uh, default, and usually it should be set to typical, which would collect things like time statistics and AWR and ADDM statistics and all of the good things that we want. If you set it to all, it collects extra statistics for your sequels. It uh, has a little um, overhead, so you probably don't want to set it to all, all the time. It can also be done with gather plan statistics hint. Uh, so if, if time permitting, you might see an example of the gather plan statistics hint instead of altering session with statistics level. Um, and finally, uh, there was a question on uh, DBMS XLAN display cursor. Um, and what that does is displays the execu execution plan of uh, any cursor that is still in the cache, uh, plus any statistics if you have done the previous uh, tactic of statistic level all, or using the gather plan statistics hint. If you use the uh, DBMS X plan display cursor, you'll want to set server output off, or else you get an error. Uh, there are a couple of parameters. First, your SQL ID and child number. If you leave them null, null, as John did, that will acquire the execution plan of the last query executed in that session. The third parameter is format. And all stats last basically says, give me all the I.O. and memory statistics available and display them only for the last execution of this query, even if there have been multiple executions of this query. And you can go to the Oracle PL SQL uh, types and packages reference for DBMS X plan and look for the display cursor function, and you can see all of the parameters for format. There's some quite interesting ones. So with that um, little diversion, um, John, can you show the with statement? Uh, yes, once I will more? do. I actually want to do, thank you for explaining that, by the way. I'm, I'm sorry, people. I tend to, I hope I wasn't assuming a bit too much knowledge. What I'm going to do now, we'll go back to the with statement. I just want to do one more little experiment. I'll probably optimize a mode back to rule. I'll go back to my equivalent SQL here, the with, the with clause, with that. And then, so with that as the subquery, then find the appropriate departments and run it. And even with the rule-based optimizer, I sincerely hope that I'm now getting the optimal plan, which I do. So what this really does bring home to you is that wherever you see a join or subquery, especially when it's a correlated subquery, think about factoring it out. Back to you, Dave. 